I hate this audio. It's so annoying. Do, 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 do. 大家好，欢迎来到我的频道。很高兴你能来参观我的 YouTube。Thank you so much for coming. If you've seen my last two videos on HSK textbooks, you may get a general idea of what I want to talk about now. When we think about HSK and the kind of course that people tend to go on, structure typically is textbook, workbook, HSK exams. There's tons and tons of forums, articles, Reddit pages, and courses specifically aimed at. Helping you pass the HSK exams. If you work in China, or if you are studying and you are trying to get a master's or something else, you're you're studying at a university. One thing that they will require you to get is HSK certification, depending on your level. And HSK certification is kind of a proxy for fluency. If you have HSK five, HSK six. People will assume that you have a higher level of fluency, but is that really the case? Do you need to take HSK exams to actually show your fluency to actually learn Chinese to a fluent level? As with the last video, in brief, no. Technically, no. You do not need to take HSK exams. However, it can be very useful to test your knowledge of what you learned in that previous level. And you don't even have to take the actual certificates unless it's required by your institution or by your workplace. You could even just take practice exams, and that will function in a very similar manner. And the cool thing about using HSK is that there's tons of resources available to practice for HSK specific exams. Now, when I think about this, when I hear HSK exams or practice exams or even workbooks. What's the first thing that comes to my mind? And if you're a frequent viewer, you may know exactly what I'm saying. More comprehensible input. I don't necessarily care about my score on the exams. Maybe other people do. Hot take. I'm full of hot takes. My last two videos were full of hot takes, especially on grammar explanations. But if you take the HSK exams, you will know. And even with the practice exams, the way it's structured is. Huge for comprehensible input, and I'll go through some of that today. It's more apparent in the later levels than in the beginner levels because, as a beginner, your main priority is what am I listening to? Do I know what the word is? Can I figure this out? Whereas in the later levels, you are starting to figure out what is this sentence expressing? How can I convey certain information and certain ideas? Um, in a comprehensible and in a concise and clear way. So. With these HSK exams, in brief, you have a listening section, you have a reading section. Some of them include fill in the blank and writing and other stuff like that. But the huge benefit to taking practice exams or even the actual HSK is the comprehensible input that you will get from the listening and the reading. So, if you have the funds or you have the time to take the practice exams, which tend to be free online, and I'll give you two resources today that are. Free and have a lot of really good content on there to help with this. You will be able to get a ton of more comprehensible input that will reinforce everything that you've learned through HSK one through six if you're at those levels, and will also help introduce new words because just like the textbooks, the exams also like to give you words that you have not studied and are not on the list because nice. That's my perspective on how to utilize the HSK exams well. Hopefully, this video is less than the, well, the last videos because those are pretty long. Let's see what we can do. So, I have two different resources that are available. If you look at my Chrome tabs, you can see that we have one is from Mandarin Bean, and this is HSK free, free Chinese test online all levels, and a second one. Which is called Free HSK Practice Test, HSKHacker.com. So all the credit for making these things are to these two websites. We'll start off with Mandarin Bean, and then we'll go off to the HSKHacker.com, and you will see the reasons for that shortly. So, looking at Mandarin Bean, Mandarin Bean is also a graded reader, so it's similar to the Chairman's Bao and Do Chinese. So if you are interested in looking at some of their other content. 
feel free to browse, browse the rest of their website. And I don't think I need to say this because I'm a very tiny creator, but none of this is sponsored by any of these sites. One of them is a blog. The other is an actual substantiated website with other stuff, but I am not sponsored. So um, we have, as we can see, different levels of HSK, starting from HSK1 all the way to HSK6. And what you will notice is that it's separated by their testing skill thing type. I don't know how to say that. English is hard sometimes. But for HSK1 and 2, you will see a listening section and a reading section. For HSK3, you'll see listening, reading, and writing, and this extends from three to five, and then HSK6 is just listening and reading. So why don't we start off with HSK1. We'll briefly go through what the HSK exam levels look like through the different levels and what is actually testing you. So let's start off with the listening, HSK1 listening. So. I have the first option of the HSK level one exam for the listening. Um, and what we can see is that there's a listening audio bar here and we have pictures. What you'll notice with all of the HSK exams is that they really like using pictures, which I think is a great way to prevent you from translating to English. Again, my pet peeve is don't translate from your target language to English because that will reinforce bad behaviors of translation when you're talking with someone you don't have time to translate to english if they're bouncing off different ideas to you all you have to do is i need to understand the chinese i need to understand my target language i can't do that if i'm translating so what we need to do is train our brain to understand the chinese from the beginning and utilizing pictures as opposed to english translations is very useful to help establish that habit early on in our language learning studies so we have a couple of true and false type of things. And we have more pictures, we have times, um, and all of this is basically, you'll be listening to one thing and then seeing what works according to that image. Um, and we have a couple of other fill in the blanks. One thing that you'll notice this entire time, and we can see it in 16, 17, and 18, you are getting the pinyin for all of these questions. You will see Chinese and you will see a pinyin for it. This will not be present in later levels, but at least in HSK1, the main point of this is not that you learn the characters well, because it's gonna be very hard as you're learning the pronunciation, learning the characters, learning the tones, like how do you synthesize all of these things? It may take longer to understand a character with its meaning, pronunciation, and intonation all in one component without more time to digest what that actually means. So they do give you the pinyin that will change in future levels. So let me just give you an example of how this will look like in practice. So we'll listen to the audio. I hate this audio. It's so annoying. Do, 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 do. 欢迎参加HSK一级考试。大家好,欢迎参加HSK一级考试。大家好,欢迎参加HSK一级考试。大家好,欢迎参加HSK一级考试。大家好, so basically they're just introducing you. Hello, welcome to the HSK test. Four different times with four different speakers. Okay, you can scroll through this. De I would definitely recommend scrolling through this. Okay. One thing to know about this website is, in the audio, you will not get an English translation. So they will explain what's going on in Chinese. So for this first section that I'm showing here, it will say Di Buffet, which is part one. Um, and it will give you an example of what's going on, Di Ru, and tell you, okay, here is a um, phrase, Heng Gao Xing. And then you have to select which one is true or which one is false. Um, I'm assuming that they won't give you the English for the rest of it as well, but a hack that you can do 
The workbooks are very similar, if not exactly the same as the HSK text. The different sections will be exactly the same as well. So if you are confused about a section, go into your HSK level specific workbook and then that will tell you the instructions in English for the earlier levels. Um, but that's kind of basically the structure. You hear something, does it match the picture, yes or no? Um, so let's go for a couple of questions and see what it looks like. So it just said, which means now we'll start with question one. So question one, there's this guy with a telephone. So I have to say, I have to hear the audio and say, is it true or false? So it says and it also gives you two different voices, a male voice and a female voice, which I think is very useful because for me, it's harder for me to understand male voices than female voices. And I don't know if that's because I'm more in tune with female voices because I have a female voice and my ear is more trained because it's hearing how I speak all the time or if it's something else, but it's easier for me to understand the pitch differences in a female voice. So having both is actually very useful to help the intonation pattern that you may be more weak at and strengthen it as compared to the one that you're more prone to hearing the differences, the subtle differences. So in the picture, this guy, he has a phone, so he's taking a phone call. Dadianhua is taking a phone call, so this would be true. Click true. And you just keep going through that for the rest of the um, pictures. The following parts are very similar. Just listen to the audio, select what is true, what is false, and that's pretty much it for the listening. And that will be consistent for the majority of the HSK exams. Let's go to reading. So we'll do HSK1 reading. So this will probably take less time because you are reading as opposed to listening. You don't have to wait for the audio to kind of catch up to you. Um, one thing I noticed while taking these tests is that I'm kind of done with it prior to the audio. So. Um, that will definitely be helpful when you're in uh, more challenging levels, um, but at least for the earlier levels, there is a lot of dead space. But with reading, you don't have that. So with reading, I'm just going to look at these images and see is this true or not? Do these images match the character and the pinning? Again, we have pinning for HSK1. So for, let's go on to question 21. So there's this kid who's writing and the character is xie, which is to write. So this would be true. And if we go down, then we have this girl listening to headphones, ting. We have t, which is um, cha, not cai. So this would be false. Um, so oftentimes they will include characters that are similar looking, but they're not exactly the same meaning. So that is what this one is, cai is very different than cha, but they look pretty similar together. So keep an eye out for that. It's definitely going to help you to test similar looking characters, but that have very different meanings. So if we go down um, in part two, again, we have six pictures, but now we have to kind of fill in the blank, um, right? So we get pull down options to see what picture matches this statement. So this first statement is Ni hao wo neng chi yi kuar ma. So can I eat, eat a bit of this, right? Um, so we have to look at the pictures and see what has food, what could potentially be the answer. So looking right off the bat, C and D have food. Those could be potentials for it, but could it be C? Could it be D? I don't know. C has pineapples and fruit, but D is like this guy reaching out for it. So I'm assuming it will be D, but we can go through the other questions to see is this truly D or does D match another question um, and another statement instead? So we can quickly scroll through the other ones and see. So 27 is 他们在 my ifuna. D cannot work with that. D is food related, it's not clothing related. 28 says, uh, 天气太热了, 多吃些水果. 
So this one is saying the temperature is too hot. Eat more fruit. So now we know. C has fruit in it. We have pineapples, apples, bananas. That will go with the 28 because it's talking about fruit. Eat more fruit. And D will go for 26 because he's asking, can I have a little bit more of this? So we select D for 26. We select C for 28. And this is a strategy that you can actually incorporate into your actual HSK exams or your practice exams. So for the third part, we have six different characters, six different words, and we need to see what character fits in with the statement. Again, instead of like the previous um, part, we match the pictures with the statements, but now we're matching words with the statements. So very similar in concept, just slightly more challenging because you're looking at actual characters. So for example, So who is that person? And then you could be like, oh, A, Yuan. Yuan is a hospital, so no, it's not that. Xiaoyu means it's raining or it rained, so no, it's not that. C is 我不认识他. So is it this one? Yes, because 31 is asking, who is this person? C answers, I don't know her. So we would select C, and you can do the rest for. Um, and you can do the same for the rest of the questions. Part four. This is a fill in the blank. So they're giving you individual words and then you have to fill in what word works best within the parentheses that are given. So an example is 38. 你会说 blank ma. So if we look at the different responses, we can see 你会说坐吗? That won't work. 坐 means to sit. So can you speak sitting? That doesn't happen. Go through the rest of the examples and you land on example E, which is Han Yi, which is Chinese. 你会说汉语吗? Which is, can you speak Chinese? So we have filled in the blank with um, the corresponding word that matches that statement. And that's pretty much for the reading. Now this structure and format will continue throughout all of the different HSK exams. Some of them will incorporate more difficult things or other sections as well, but this is the main structure for listening and reading. So we won't go as in depth for the rest of the HSK chapters, but I'll just let you know what it looks like and the brief level of material. How difficult is that material? So we'll go back. Let's go into HSK 2 listening. Again, we have the pictures, we have the true and false. But now the pictures will correspond to more challenging words. And again, in part two, we have to match the picture with different phrases. So you will have to hear what phrase is going on and which picture matches that. So in the HSK2 exam, part three is different than in HSK1. Now we have a section where they will give you a statement, you will listen to a statement, and then you will have to answer which of the three um, answers are correct, which fits the sentence the best. So if we look at the example, um, the example question, you'll see there's a guy who's asking a girl, hey, there's this cup here, which one is yours? And she's like, oh, the red one is mine. And then the question is, 小王的杯子是什么颜色的? So what color is Xiao Wang's cup? And then you will have to answer, the cup is red. So this is kind of what's happening. There will be a dialogue or a statement and then a question will be asked and you have to determine what is the correct answer to that question. This can be challenging, so if you need multiple listens, then feel free to, to use multiple listens. And that same kind of structure happens with part four, except it's a little bit more challenging. So they tend to have multiple reiterations of the same exercise, just with increasing difficulty. This tends to be more challenging because not only do you have to understand what the example sentence is saying, but also how do you synthesize this question? How do you determine, is this actually a true or false statement that's being said? And this can be very tricky. Uh, I'm sure you've taken true or false exams before. Sometimes it can be trickier than expected, so pace yourself through this one, but it will really help you to understand what is actually going on. You can't have a superficial understanding of the sentence in order to answer the true or false question correctly. HSK 3, 4, and 5 are pretty much exactly the same in terms of reading and listening. 
Um, the only thing that is different is one. If you notice, there is no pinyin. You're done with pinyin. I personally think that that's ideal. <laughs> don't use the pinyin when you don't have to. Um, so I really do like this. You can also see that the questions, the statements are much longer. It will be more challenging, but that's kind of the point of these things. So you can already see how much comprehensible input you can get out of these exams, even if you don't take them in terms of getting a specific grade. The other thing though, is there's a writing section in three, four, and five. So let's take a brief look at what the writing section is like. The writing section for here, you will have to organize the characters to formulate the correct sentence, correct in terms of meaning and also in terms of grammar. I've done this in my workbooks previously and honestly, it wasn't the most beneficial for me because one other thing that I tend to do and I, I prefer in terms of language learning, again, another hot take. I don't like to produce language if I don't know that it's already 100% correct. This exercise forces you to look at the words and to put them together to make a correct sentence. And sometimes that can also make you make the wrong sentence and train you to know what the wrong sentence is. So I personally don't like doing the writing sections, but if you feel like it's beneficial for you, then feel free to use it. Just making sentences that are correct. They also have pictures. You have to explain what's going on in the pictures and you can type it in. It can cause you to integrate and internalize bad Chinese because you're not fluent yet. So how are you supposed to know that what you're doing is actually correct? But that's just my philosophy on it. I would rather only produce things that I am absolutely sure of are correct until I'm able to be fluent enough to know what is right and what is wrong. But that's pretty much it for the HSK exams. They're fairly similar. The, the level of difficulty just increases with each following exam and there's some different sections but that's pretty much all laid out for you there. This website has a specific format. You answer it on the website, you get the results on the website, but I do have another website as well that has a different structure. Again, the structure of the test is the same, but the way that they convey the information is different. So if we go on to the second resource that I have for you, this is from hskhacker.com. And this just gives you way more exams, way more tests to practice, way more comprehensible in input to consume. So I scroll down and it basically has PDFs and audios of each of the different HSK exams. And there's five different sets per HSK exam. So if you utilize both of these resources together, you will have eight extra HSK exams per level to practice through and get more comprehensible input on. So I've already loaded an HSK1 PDF. So their PDF downloads, they also have the audio. So let's just go through it. This looks like an actual HSK exam because it is an HSK practice exam. Just like any other standardized test, they release practice exams. So this will be the most similar to an actual HSK exam. So if you are taking the test in an official capacity, utilize this to help familiarize yourself with what's going to be on the exam. Because one thing you'll note, there's very little English on this exam, even though this is HSK1, right? So familiarize yourself with the different parts, utilize your workbooks to know what to do in each section because they have the English translations on there. But it's the exact same thing as the previous resource. It just looks a lot better because this is intended to be paper. So print it out, circle it yourself, and then get the answers for it but you have all the same sections. This is starting off with the listening and then it'll go into the reading. So this is all listening. And then here, this is R part two and you're doing the reading section. I wonder if these two resources are actually giving you the exact same HSK exams that are practice. They're just in different formats. So if that's the case, then I guess you have two extra for this other resource. You can choose the format that you like the best and also see if they're actually the same because I'm not sure. I haven't gone through every single exam because that would take a lot of time. But at least for this HSK1 exam, it seems like it's exactly the same as the previous resource on Mandarin Bean. So at the end of this um, PDF though, 
we get answers, which is something that we don't necessarily have for the other exam. This is exactly what the structure is like. Um, the nice thing about the second resource though is that they give you the dialogues for all of the audio. So if you're unsure of what happened with a particular question, go back to the audio section and it will give you the actual dialogue for what the question was based off of, which is very useful when you're trying to figure out what's, what's, what's happening, what's going on, what's going on there. And then you can also have just the answer specifically and calculate your own total as to whether you would pass this exam or not. And again, they have um, five different sets for each HSK exam. Um, so it's very useful and none of these are behind a paywall. If you look at the other resource, the Mandarin Bean, you can see that there are two tests that are hidden behind a paywall, I believe. It's locked. So you won't be able to access that. Um, whereas for the other resource, everything is completely free. And honestly, I prefer using the second one better because the interface, there is no interface, it's a PDF. It feels more like a real exam and you can test yourself utilizing time constraints as well. If someone likes to have just the online format, the click and drag and true and false and stuff like that, then both resources are available to you. Yeah, that's this video. I hope that this will help everyone who is considering taking an HSK exam or who just wants more comprehensible input to practice. I've given you two resources. If you have any questions, feel free to leave it down in the comments below. Um, I can try to find some more examples as well, but your workbooks also will have a lot of really good example questions and example answers. And again, the point of these tests is not necessarily to get you to be fluent, but rather to help you understand more comprehensible input. Just increase the amount of input that you are immersing in. And it's a great way to really quantify what is your level. So I do like the exams for that, right? So it is a great supplement to your main comprehensible input, but I do spend more time reading more, listening more, watching more than doing exercises like this. But if you like this video, please give it a like, comment, share, and subscribe, and I will see you guys next week. Have a good one. 再见!